Welcome to August in our garden. I thought I'd take you just on a quick tour of a few of the areas that I'm enjoying in August because as we know not every part of the garden can look good every season. So I'm really excited because this was a new area and uh, I didn't expect much from these hydrangeas but they have performed so well this year. Charlie says hello. And the Portuguese laurels that we planted last year as a hedge to surround what we're calling the secret garden or the fountain garden have grown so much. Our plan is to keep them at about um, six or seven feet tall just so that they hide the areas of the garden um, from other vantage points, but not so tall that they shade everything out. So last year I had planted from seed some creeping thyme to go around the flagstone and was so fortunate that this year it bloomed and looked absolutely spectacular as a carpet of purple um, uh, surrounding the fountain. Uh, currently it's looking a little shaggy so we'll see especially with shade coming in with the tree growth I'm not sure if I'll keep it long term but uh, for now it was lovely so I had planted uh, or just seeded a partial shade wildflower mix in this area all along the edges where the uh, with the four flanking um, uh, limelight hydrangea standards and as they petered out, I pulled everything out, but I didn't have an idea for what I wanted to put in. So as I was cutting off the tops of allium bulbs, um, or allium blooms that had just finished uh, last month, I thought I may as well put them in here. Kind of a little modern touch. Uh, Ryan's not so sure about it, um, but at least the seeds will fall and I might get a few more alliums in this area. I'm still thinking about plans for what long term I'll underplant these hydrangea standards with. Uh, I thought I might like the idea of just leaving it plain so that there's a bit of a rest for the eye, but now I'm thinking that I might want to add a few ferns underneath. Um, so we'll see though, the jury's out. If you have any ideas of what you would underplant these with that are low maintenance, let me know. If you're wondering why the piece of wood there, it's just this fountain is quite deep and we wanna make sure that uh, we don't have any birds falling into the water there. So the shed, as you noted, or you will note, is still not painted. Best laid plans, as I'm sure you all know, of when you think that you're gonna to get to all these projects in the summer and it just doesn't happen. So we shall see we get to that before the season's over but I'm really enjoying this view as well uh, we take our morning tea and coffee here some mornings when we're not too busy and it's been a good year for some vegetables not for others um, we've pulled the peas that were wonderful and we've got some beans growing up the trellis uh, we've got fennel and uh, kohlrabi kale zucchini and tomatoes and of course a lot more tomatoes in our greenhouse and um, of course it's hydrangea season it's all about the hydrangeas and they practically glow in the evening here I have a whole row of them over here and this rhododendron tree is under planted with crocosmia crocosmia needs full sun but it still blooms quite beautifully here and those were there long before uh, everything grew up the way that it did. And I was wondering what to plant in these um, window boxes of the shed because I didn't have much luck with what I planted last year and pansies don't seem to do well there while impatience seem to love it. So that's a good note for me next year. This isn't necessarily my chosen color scheme. I'm not big into the very, very bright colors, but I know they do well, so I might look at uh, what I can source next year. And while we haven't gotten a lot of apples this year, 
our peaches did absolutely spectacular, which is very unusual in the Pacific Northwest for those of you who live in this region, knowing the rains that we get. We harvested, oh, probably a hundred peaches and I've just been baking at the storm every night and we're freezing them and it's just been absolutely glorious. They're the best peaches I've ever eaten. Uh, don't ask me the variety because I don't remember. And finally, I thought I'd just give you a little bit of a look at the cut flower garden this year. I'm really happy with it this year, except for a few things. I've realized that I'm going to stick to straight annuals in the cut flower garden and take all of the perennials, including the yarrow and the delphinium, and transplant those into my cottage garden, the sort of orchard. Oh, there's a beautiful hummingbird coming by. You can hear it. And I'm going to just stick to my cosmos, straw flower, uh, rose of dahlias, uh, my snapdragon, scabiosa, and status, which all make for beautiful weekly bouquets. So as you can see, this type of status I'd grown, the pink poker. I don't think I'll grow that next year. It is neat. I just have trouble figuring out how to best incorporate it into bouquets. I do prefer this status because I cut it, um, use it in bouquets, and then when it's done, I when the bouquet's done, I take them out and I dry them, and they're great for wreaths and other dried arrangements. This is my first year growing this type of long stem scabiosa. I've got the dark night and the salmon pink and they're beautiful. Um, so I'm thinking about what I'll be growing next year. Ha didn't have much luck with zinnias this year. I seeded a bunch and these were the only ones that uh, remain. And I, I might be out on a limb here, but they're not my favorite flower in cut flowers. So I think I'd grow them for the garden, but not for my bouquets. Um, but I won't, I won't be growing too many next year. So I think I want to seed the space to my dahlias, which have been doing well. As you can see, I've been cutting on them a lot. So there's not too, too many blooms here. But uh, at, at the back, the large orange is Clyde's Choice and just in front of it, is a labyrinth which I love and in front of that is Ferncliff Rusty and Salmon Runner which is maybe my favorite it's the pink pink one right there and then I've got Petra's Wedding which is a small pom-pom in white and um, this one's just been wonderful this year so many blooms and the bees love it as you can see this is a uh, liquid desire and I've also really loved Apple Blossom, um, which starts at a brighter yellow and then goes into a peachy pink. And I'm still waiting for, for a few others to bloom. So I thought I'd give you just a little update on what's looking great in my garden. Have a wonderful day.